Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I will be looking at the CPU FX Nitro system. This is part two and today I will be looking at the water cooling kit. One of the most important parts to this Nitro system is the water cooling kit and within this kit of course you have different components. I'll just go over exactly how some of those work. Now, you should know as well that this system does come pre-installed, pre-filled, already sealed, already mounted, so it's very easy for almost anybody really to get into water cooling. Now let me just go over some of the basics on the water cooling rig here. Right here we have what's called a water block. This water block gets mounted onto your CPU via mounting hardware which goes mounted onto your motherboard. Right here we have the reservoir. Inside the reservoir we have a pump. This pump is powered by the power connection which goes connected directly into your power supply. Right here we have the radiator and on top of the radiator we have a 120 millimeter fan here. This fan actually is adjustable by a little tiny speed dial. Of course you can increase or decrease that via this little dial. Right here we have a three pin connector. This connector goes connected directly into your motherboard. Some other things that are included in this package of course is the manual. You have a very very easy to follow instruction manual here. Whether you're using a Pentium 4 setup or if you're using an AMD setup it's very very easy to follow the instructions in here and get everything working very very easily. And of course we have the different mounting hardware right here. This is of course dependent upon whatever system you have, whether it be a Pentium 4 or a AMD system. It's quite different, the hardware that is required for it. And of course some Arctic Silver Thermal Compound which you have to apply on the CPU. And if you do order an AMD system, you'll get a shim included. This shim is basically to protect the core, the CPU core, so you don't chip it when you're actually mounting the water block to the system. Now there are dangers to water cooling setups. If the pump was to fail, you have a potential of frying your CPU. Or if you were to get some water leakage, of course water and electricity does not mix and you're looking at shorting your system out. So you should know that before getting into a system like this. A lot of the new BIOSes these days do have thresholds temperature threshold as you can set for the CPU so when it reaches a certain temperature the system will shut down so that's good certainly if your pump was to fail the system would shut down and not cause any harm however again we still have the issue of water if something was to cut or break in this and pump water all over your motherboard you're looking at a serious issue certainly going to fry uh, a lot of hardware possibly inside of your system. Now something that is inclusive in this particular setup, you have some protective plastic here around the tubes and that's great because it helps against all the sharp edges which are possibly inside your case. Maybe you're wondering how does a water cooling kit like this keep your CPU nice and cool. Well let me show you how that works. As I mentioned before right here you have a water block. This water block is mounted right on top of your CPU. Of course when the system is turned on your CPU is going to get nice and warm and this is going to in turn heat this up and of course heat the water on top of it up. Now where does all that hot water go? Well it gets pumped into the radiator. The radiator disperses the heat. The fan assists in dispersing all that heat and pumps it out of your case. And of course then the water is cooled and it goes back into the reservoir. The pump pumps it back into the block as cold water and the cycle continues over and over. Depending what system you have, whether it's an AMD setup or a Pentium 4 setup, of course the mounting hardware will be a little different. It's around the same procedure though for both. Today I will be looking at an AMD setup and show you exactly how the water block gets attached onto the motherboard. Right here we have the mounting hardware for an AMD setup and right here are a bunch of plastic screws and there are springs. These springs basically go into each of these long plastic screws. Right here we have four more screws. These actually go up through the motherboard and get mounted to these two brackets. Let me show you how that works. First thing you want to do here is take these four smaller screws and mount them through the motherboard. Take your motherboard here and you just 
insert four of these like so. So again here we have these brackets. These of course get screwed to those four plastic screws which are protruding through the motherboard. Once these two brackets have been secured to the motherboard, the next step of course is to install your CPU and apply some thermal compound. Then you're going to mount the water block on top of it and you're going to use these four screws. You can see here each one of these plastic screws does have the spring which is inserted into the screw itself and basically what this does is just give it some tension when you're actually screwing it down through the water block into this black bracket right here on either side of the socket. Once the water block is installed on the motherboard, that really completes this whole installation procedure, except of course for plugging in the pump as well as the fan and of course the rest of the hardware components like video cards, sound cards, CD-ROM drives, hard drives, power supply and so on. Now I should mention here, this last step was really done for demonstration reasons only. The correct procedure would have been to take the motherboard back inside your case and install it there after you install the brackets. So again, install the brackets onto your motherboard, then bring the motherboard back inside your case, install it inside your case, and then mount the water block. To give you some indication how loud a setup like this is, you can go ahead now and have a listen. I'm going to increase the audio here so you can really get an idea how loud this is. And of course, as you can hear, it isn't that loud. Now let me plug in a 7,000 RPM fan, which is on a standard copper cooler these days, and really see how loud that is in comparison to something like this. And as you can hear, it certainly is very loud. This is a 7,000 RPM fan. I'll crank the audio so you can hear exactly how loud this is. Again, quite a difference between something like this with a 7,000 RPM fan and a setup like an H2O rig. That would have really one 120 millimeter fan. Now, this fan on this system is adjustable. Right now, it is at maximum spin. And you can actually increase this, of course, by dialing it up here. Just using a regular screwdriver to just dial it up or dial it back. Let me go ahead now and dial it back. And you can see here it's even a, a little bit quieter than before. Of course, the more you go, the louder it's going to get. And as you decrease it, it will decrease the noise level as well, of course, as the RPMs. Now, decreasing the RPMs will give you a couple of degrees difference. Not a lot, just really one or two degrees difference in the result. In these next temperature results, I will be using an Athlon XP1800 overclocked to 2000. The CPU voltage is 1.85. Now you can see here at the bottom right hand corner is a temperature result of a very high 41 degrees C and this is actually at idle. And the max low temperature is 50 to 51 degrees Celsius. Well, as you can see here, some really high results from this water cooling rig. It's 51 degrees C is too high, way too high for a water cooling setup. You should expect around 35 to 38 degrees Celsius for a rig like I had. Unfortunately, this is not happening here. What is the problem? What is the weakest link? Well, I think it's the radiator. The radiator, first of all, is very narrow and it's not very big and there's only one fan across the radiator. In some good kits, they have copper radiators, copper water blocks, and of course a couple of fans on them. If not a couple of fans, they have one fan, of course, that really can pull a lot of air away from the radiator and keep the radiator nice and cool. So again, I think in this system, certainly the radiator needs to be upgraded, replaced, or something, because it's not...